Cheapo. It's Poundland special time again, because it's that time of the vernal equinoxes. Now, uh, to be honest, the reason I'm doing one now is I found a big box full of stuff from Poundland I'd kind of forgotten about, and I want to fit other things in that box. So, let us begin with our pound shop shenanigans. With Battle Squadron! Not just a squadron, but a Battle Squadron. They're probably going to have a fight or something. Yes, 100 British soldiers. Epic battles. So, it's the classic Toy Story style little green soldier men. Look, there's the uh, Union Jack in there, just to make it look more local. Morning. Not suitable for children under 36 months. Choking has to do to small parts. Hooray! That's how we know they'll be fun. So, it's basically our friends at Funtastic have produced a hundred soldiers for a pound. A penny each, and they give you the bucket free. You can't complain, can you? Well, you can complain, but you'll be stupid because it's cheap. Well, let's see what they look like then. I'm going to guess like they've already been through a war and they lost, frankly. I kind of want to count them, but on the other hand, I'm not going to do that because it would be really boring. There's a hundred of these buggers here and I can believe it. Look, for starters, you've got a really weird square rock that looks like somebody didn't finish making it properly in Minecraft. I presume you break this off and... Patriotic Square Rock. Da, 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 da. Oh, that's the wrong theme. So, what have we got then? Are all from the same side, these guys? I can't tell. Well, this chap here is uh, a Morris dancer. They've given him some sort of stick that looks very loosely like a rifle if you squint, and he doesn't really know what to do with it, I think, so he's just getting on and Morris dancing. He's got a big dent in his back, a bell on his head, a face that looks like something that escaped from Easter Island, and overall, <clears throat> don't think he's going to be on the winning side in a war, is he? Who's this chap? Oh my god! It's Heart Attack Henry! Yep, he's just had a heart attack. He's trying to thump his stump, um, chest to get it going again. It's not working. He'll be dead soon. He's got 12 children. It's going to be horrible. Who else have we got? Ooh, somebody with some sort of bazooka going on. Thin Head Ted, I think. Oh, God. I think the bazooka got very hot, and it melted his face off, and it's kind of melted to the bazooka. Oh, that's really horrible. <laughs> Oh, I don't want to look at that one anymore. Quickly, let's... What the bloody hell's going on here? <laughs> He's just sort of ambling along with a massive machine gun vaguely pointing out of his crotch area. It's like he's posing for an amusing photograph or something. Oh, yeah, lads, hey, 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 stick this on the Facebook. They'll love it back home. <laughs> He's probably not saying anything because he doesn't have a mouth. Man, these, these are beginning to freak me out more heavily than I thought they would. What else have we got going on? Hmm, they're all pretty similar. Oh my goodness. This chap is very pleased to have a gigantic rifle that he can't seem to actually hold or use properly. Also, one of his boots has melted to the floor. That is a bit of a worry, I'll be honest with you. Yeah, I mean, you're not expecting a lot for a penny each, and, well, they're not really giving you a lot, so that's uh, quite positive on that front. Always oh, more designs. Here's a chap with a knee attachment. Bionic knee. That's the new weapon of war that will win us all the battles. Actually, it looks like a kind of giant bottle or something. Maybe he's just gone and got drunk. Yeah, his gun's on his back, so I don't know what he's carrying there. And his head is... interesting. <clears throat> Let's just put it politely and get rid of him as soon as possible. And there's... oh, these two guys have the same uh, thing going on. A very, very wonky right arm going on as they walk around with their gun pointed in a slightly different direction to the one they're looking in, which I don't think is very good for accuracy. Oh man, are there any more in here? I can't tell, because they all look the same from a distance. They don't really look that different uh, up close, but oh, this one, this one's not bad. He looks like somebody who's vaguely in command or something, and yeah, he's much better rendered than most of them. Well done, you are now in charge, although there's a big hole in the back of your head, so I think you may have been shot. <clears throat> hate to break that to you, but, you know, hole in the back of the head is usually a sign of that. This guy is my favourite, definitely. I don't know how many of these you get in the hundred, but it isn't enough. And why won't you focus on him? The ca even the camera fears loping machine gun man. Ah, what a group of people. Well, if you particularly want your children to um, get small cuts in their fingers from very sharp-edged plastic... And just as I mentioned that, I find the sharpest one yet. Mm -mm, lovely. Um, yeah, then they can have hours of fun with these. If only they did a hundred in different colours. 
they could be the enemy or something. I tell you what I did find, actually, that I thought um, looked much better, although I have yet to open them and find out. Skull Knight! Knights from Hell! So there's a place called Hell, it's probably not very nice, and, and these Skull Knights have come out of it. Everybody up to the story on that then? Brilliant. Superior materials, superior performance. They're lumps of plastic, how do they perform? Superior manufacture, modern tech ikes. Ah, uh, I do love some modern tech ikes. Or tech accuse, maybe. Model boutique. 100% safe and non-toxic. Mm. Right, nothing else to tell us on there. Please retain this for information. Nope. Oh, oh, oh. But these, I looked at them, and um, they're obviously much bigger scale than those, and you only get a handful of them. It doesn't say how many you get. Let us count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. I thought there was fewer than that. I probably wouldn't have started counting if I'd known there were so many. Or I would have at least counted like they do on Sesame Street. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Anyway, let's have a look at these because they look damn cool. They look like the Deadites from uh, Army of Darkness and other such Evil Dead related films. They're made of quite really, mm, worryingly soft plastic. I think is the description here. You can kind of bend their arms about, which is good because this guy just looks like he's having a migraine. Um, maybe you could heat them uh, under, with some warm water and then they'd stay in the position you move them to. I don't know. But I'll tell you what, I really like the sculpts. Look, you can see his little uh, skelly face and everything. Um, nice bit of detail on it, although, yeah, I'm not entirely convinced by the position he's in. But we've got this guy. He's a bit casual. Yeah, he got the old hand on the hip. Well, you know, I was going to go to the cinema, but I suppose I'll be an undead warrior. That's the way it goes, isn't it? Um, this guy's got a scythe and a really bad problem with his legs. Whoa, he looks like he's in that Moonwalker video Michael Jackson did, all leaning over. Um, still pretty nifty, though, by the time you've bent his legs back. We've got, oh my god, a chap with really weird wings just made out of long fe feathers, increasingly long feathers. That's very strange indeed. He's got himself a big old hatchet, or axe as we call it in the trade, which he will use to kill puppies if you do not donate to his Patreon for his uh, series of videos about Let's Play or something. And uh, another kind of... I want to call that a scythe, but it's quite badly rendered if it is a scythe. Is that the same as the other guy? It is! But this one's so badly bent up in the packet, or maybe in the bag when I carried it home, I actually didn't recognise them as the same thing. So are there eight different designs, do you think? Let's have a look. Oh man, he's my favourite. He's my favourite so far. He's got a really weird sword with a heavy bit on the end, and a sort of giant, almost cornucopia-style um, horn. And you know what sound it makes when he blows the horn? Nothing. Skeletons don't have any lungs. Or lips. They Moving swiftly on, <coughs> yep, there's another one with an axe and a shield going on there. Um, ooh, he's, he's looking a bit more active there, that one. Also made up of slightly thicker feeling plastic, which is odd. Another horn guy, <laughs> he's getting really into it. He's like the background of a really odd Eurovision entry, that one. Um, no, I think we're through all the different designs. God, the winged one is weird, isn't it? If these weren't so squashed up, they would be fantastic. But as it is, for a pound, genuinely quite impressed with those. Oh, oh and look what I found in Pound World, everybody! It's a stealth wristwatch! Blink time! Try me! One of these watches where you press the face. And it shows you the completely wrong time, because I haven't set it. But yeah, for a pound it's alright, isn't it? Um, but you may remember that uh, Loot Crate had one of these in a while ago, and said the black ones, the stealth ones, were Loot Crate exclusives. How have they ended up in pound were Oh. Oh! We see what you're up to, Loot Crate, selling off your um, excess stock to Pound World. Well, keep an eye out. Who knows what other items you may find in there? Probably not the t-shirts, but maybe other bits and bobs. Who knows? Those Q-Fig um, sort of little statues they do keep turning up for two or three quid in B&M, I've noticed, if you have a and m near you. It's a shop called B&M Bargains, but remember, you must refer to it as Bum Bargains, because that's funny. Right, hunger strikes. Let us have some sugar. In the form of chockers and nutters! 
Yep, going to be one of those days. So, um, yeah, these are all quite obviously rip-offs of M&M's. M&M's are a small sweet. They're like uh, chocolate with a crispy shell. And they all taste the same, although the fact they're different colours. Um, M&M's are a bit crappy, really, the standard M&M's. I don't understand them at all. They're just like Smarties, only not as good. Now, peanut M&M's, on the other hand, woo, one of the best of the confectionaries, for my money. Um, and one of my absolute favourite things, peanut M&M's, or peanut nutters as they are calling them in this complete and utter rip-off thing. He's, uh, there's a really weird place in uh, central London called M&M World, and it's literally like a giant shop that sells M&M branded things, as if anybody gives a shit about M&M branded stuff. It's really weird. And people actually go in and buy, like, plastic biplanes with a little M&M men in it. It's one of the strangest things I've ever seen. It's like somebody just invented them and said, look, this is this is a popular thing to have on stuff. And they're like, no, there's some sweets. No, it's it's popular. Look, we've got this big shop. Ooh, must be then. It's I've never got my head around it. I really haven't. Um, but don't go in there if you're hungry, because they pump the smell of uh, chocolate throughout the whole shop, um, which is one of those things that they do. So, chocolate chockers, 200 grams of them. Here are the little rip-off M&M men, and they've all got bites taken out of them, and they're all bleeding to death or something. They look absolutely horrified, as if they're in agony. So, good work there, graphic design people. Coverture <coughs> uh, chocolate. Coverture chocolate? In a crisp coloured sugar shell. What do they look like? Well, you'd be forgiven for thinking they look like M&Ms, I tell you what, they bloody do. I've been snacking on these things uh, on and off for about a week now, so I've got a good idea of what they taste like. They taste like slightly cheaper M&Ms, really. The standard sort of Poundlandy chocolate that's a little bit greasy. Um, the sugar coating thing is alright. They're okay. They're okay. I wouldn't say they're particularly marvellous. And if you are into M&Ms, these are not as good. And the weirdest thing is... They sell M&M's in Poundland, in packs of 165 grams. So you're basically just getting, like, 35 grams more and an inferior product. It's really weird. <clears throat> now, the Nutters. The Nutters. As I said before, I do love peanut M&M's, but the Nutters, frankly, are not as good. As you can see, they're far less uniform than M&M's, and I think that's because the peanuts aren't as good. Um, the chocolate and the sugar stuff is fairly thin, you can get away with, but the peanuts themselves weren't particularly nice in these. They had that kind of weird, dirty taste that cheap peanuts have. Um, if you've never experienced a cheap peanut, they have a slightly dirty taste. There, you've learnt something today. Also, there was an incredible amount of yellow ones in the packet as compared to other colours. Um, overall, they've got amusing names, but let's be honest here, they're not particularly good. Again, you can usually find uh, peanut M&Ms in Poundland anyway, in similar size packets, so you might as well just go for the proper thing, which is much nicer. Why do these things exist? Oh well. They've been caught in some sort of zombie apocalypse now. Look, somebody's literally eaten the tops of their heads. Horrifying. Right, let's move swiftly on to first bricks. First, there were bricks. Then there, there was probably some more bricks. That's the way it works. Blocktown Girls, as Billy Joel very nearly sang about. So yeah, it's fake Lego from good old Block Tech, or Brick by Brick, or whatever they're calling themselves this five-minute period. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, it's kind of super cheap Duplo for 18-month-old children. Um, four characters, eight blocks. Yep, this is about as simple as it gets, guys. First bricks are easy click, great for building your first models. Fair enough. Right, let's see what they're actually like. In s oh god, they're all sealed up with bloody um, sellotape. I didn't realise that. I'm going to have to tear into them like a madman. Don't forget to cast me in your horror films. Actually, I've been in horror films, I shouldn't say that. Right, um, yes, here are some remarkably similar faces. In fact, the two on the right are pretty much identical with the mouth moved around slightly, and the one on the far left looks surprised. And they're all wearing similar colours. So are they literally two bricks, are they? Yep. Perfect. Let's make our own weird gestalt entity. We are the living tribunal. Right, they need some sort of set to go with them. Don't worry, Poundland have thought of everything with Girls Cafe. Yeah, children about 18 months, quite into cafes, I find, and uh, reproducing them in a small manner in their home, so I can imagine this going down very well. <coughs> right, what we got? Not many bricks, I wouldn't have thought. Yep. Well, they seem quite... Uh, yeah, they've got a good quality feel about them, actually. I know you don't get many for your pounds, but... Um, 
Yeah, you wouldn't actually be worried about letting a ch oh. Oh no, they're a bit dirty, actually. Oh, well I was going to say you wouldn't be worried about giving them to a child for safety purposes, but now I've seen the dirt on them, I'm a bit... Mm. Right, are there instructions? Or have I... Oh no! I've ripped up the picture and now I don't know. Right, so that goes on that. A table. <clears throat> this chair is kind of as it is. And this is apparently the cafe. Oh, that goes in there. That goes on there. Yeah, I didn't really need instructions for this one, did I? That goes on there. And, oh my goodness, this is where they sell drugs. Absolutely astonishing. Yeah, these figures don't go particularly well with these things, do they? But I suppose you don't want anything too small to give to your 18-month-old children, because they'll chew them up and swallow them and use them to create thermonuclear warheads like in Dexter's laboratory. I'm pretty sure that's how that worked. So, yeah, <clears throat> a little bit overly simple, perhaps. But hey, if you do want to keep your 18-month-old amused for a short period of time, you could give them this. Or you could just, you know, play with them or something. That'd probably be quite good as well. Winged skeleton on the table. Image of the day. There we are. Somebody draw that, like, really beautifully and stick it on deviant art or something. Or I was going to say maybe Dead Journal has more that sort of feel to it. Does that still even exist? I don't know, and I don't particularly care. Let's round up with one last item. It's a shark eating somebody's leg. Look, there's a giant comedy foot coming out of his mouth. This is apparently three plus, falls out of your hands, hungry shark, squeeze for leg popping action. I presume that just to do with this toy and not just people in general. From HGL, who you may remember did the Toxic Mutants toys, which were absolutely brilliant. Anyway, it's a big rubber shark with a mad look in its eyes. Jaws the Revenge going on here, and squeeze it and the leg pops out. So the leg doesn't pop out, it doesn't work. Oh, here we are. If you get it exactly right. Oh, there's a load of glue here where it's... Hang on, are you telling me it was glued in place? The whole point of it is the bloody leg's supposed to come out and it was glued in place. Oh, dearie me. Well, I've got it, got it. There we go. Oh, so, so, so. Do you know what? I don't bloody care. Christ, nearly as bad as Jaws the Revenge, an awful film. And which segues me nicely into a little freebie for you. <clears throat> See, I could be on the radio. Uh, yeah, we're doing a new podcast called The Sequelizers. Now, the concept behind this cast of the pod is that uh, two teams of two people and a host to get together and we talk about a sequel to a film, except it is a bad sequel to a good film. For instance, Jaws, classic film, Jaws the Revenge, absolutely appalling sequel. And the idea is both teams come up with a better pitch for a sequel, a sequel that would have been a much better film. And then you can decide which one you like the best in your own head, because the host actually chooses it in the podcast. Anyway, it's called The Sequelizers, and you can find it on, like, um, Stitcher and iTunes and all those sorts of podcasting things, except not Google Play yet, because um, for some reason you only put podcasts in if you live in America. don't quite understand that bit. Anyway, it's free. Have a listen. I'm off to eat the rest of these nutters. Well, actually, I'm going to stick them in the bin and eat something nicer. Subscribe for more.